All right, so we've gone ahead and entered Publon Press, and we can see how to create Publons and store them in the database and so on. So now we want to really get into the content and be able to create uh, great content. So of course, the first thing that we would want to do is choose the Publon space uh, in which we want to create our content. And then we just go down here and click on edit. And that's going to load up some content. Please note, sometimes it might look blank, even though your Publon uh, is not blank. Uh, so just click on this, uh, this text area and uh, it will show you the so-called Publon code. So in this video, we want to cover what this code is about, right? Uh, this is a so-called JSON object and uh, JSON means JavaScript object notation. And it's uh, it, it's really a quick way of creating publons. There are more visual editors that you can use uh, to edit your publons, uh, but the quickest way is uh, by editing JSON code. And we want to be able to just quickly make some changes. So for example, if I just want to change the title, I can see here, uh, this is my title. Um, I do that and then if I just hit control alt r then i can see my publon has updated so it's a nice quick editor and we want to understand uh, what this code um, what it means and to do that we're going to cover the so-called javascript object notation so i'm just going to open up an editor for us to look at that and uh, you can use whatever editor you like and typically if it's a code editor if you save your file uh, with the extension dot uh, json json, uh, then it will give you the correct syntax highlighting. So the way to understand uh, JSON objects is, uh, well, as the name tells you, it's an object. So an object that has attributes. So for example, if you think of uh, a friend of yours, um, so let's say your friend, uh, your friend's name is Joe, and Joe is uh, is one point two meters tall. So those are the two attributes of our friend. So for our friend, we could represent our friend with this notation. We can say he has a name of Joe, and he has a height of one point two meters. So in JavaScript object notation, we have this approach of key value pairs. So the key is the attribute name. So this person, our friend, uh, he has a name. So the name attribute for our friend is Joe and the height attribute for our friend is 1.2 meters. So that's basic JavaScript object notation. You'll see a, a key and um, and a colon uh, that points to the value of that key. So it's a set of attributes. Now you can have nested attributes in JavaScript object notation. So for example, if uh, if Joe um, Joe has a hand with five fingers, right? So uh, you can say uh, hand, and probably we want to specify. Uh, which hand, so let's say it's the left hand, then we can specify further attributes of this hand of, uh, of Joe's. So on his left hand, we have a certain number of fingers. So we say number fingers, and he has five fingers on that hand. Um, and uh, let's, let's say uh, the length of his nails. Okay, so length nails, uh, so, uh, so maybe uh, his nails are short, right? So, so those are um, those are sub attributes. So those are attributes of the hand that's connected to Joe, and you can have further um, uh, sub attributes. So you could uh, you could say, well, uh, what about his thumb? So if we want to uh, look further into Joe at his thumb, let's say so. Uh, so uh, you could list all kinds of attributes of the thumb. So uh, what if we want to establish whether it's a long thumb or a short thumb? So you could do that. So 
you can go as deeply nested as you like and create objects that have all the attributes that you need to fully prescribe that object. And uh, that's basically how we store our publons. We create a bunch of attributes and uh, we also often declare the type of the object. And then that helps the interpreter render the publon on the screen. So going back here, looking at this document, you can see that uh, we are setting some style here for this document. So we are saying, add a shadow to a box and set uh, a certain amount of padding, set a background color of white and set a border radius. So if you look at the preview of this publon, uh, it does have a white background. There is a, a faint shadow here and it's a slightly rounded corner. So those are some attributes. And then we have this uh, sub attribute here, or not a sub attribute, an attribute, but it has further sub objects in it. So plons are the smaller uh, publons, if you like. So we have an array of plons. So that's something I didn't mention. So uh, we can say that um, we can create arrays of things. So uh, let's say we wanted to name all our fingers. So names of fingers. So Joe has these five fingers on his left hand, and we want to uh, we want to set all the names of the fingers there. So to create um, to create a list of things or an array of things, we use the square brackets. So remember, for the JavaScript objects, we are using curly brackets, right? So curly brackets for the whole object. Then for the sub objects, we are also using curly brackets there. And then um, uh, for arrays, for lists of things, right? So in a list of things, we don't have, uh, we don't specify keys. We simply provide a list of things here. So for example, in this case, uh, we would just have a thumb, a forefinger, a middle finger, I guess we call it a, a ring finger. Not sure whether that's the right hand. <laughs> and uh, I guess a pinky. So we've got the names of uh, all the fingers now listed as a set of, uh, well, listed as a set of things or as an array of things. So you see here, we don't need to specify an attribute, right? So we could say uh, first finger, Right, so you could say first finger, second finger, and so on. Then, uh, then we would have to declare this as being an object. But in this case, we don't expect it's going to be useful to have uh, attribute names for uh, for a list like this. So there are instances where uh, we are not concerned about giving names for things. We just want a nice list of things. In that case, an array or a list is uh, is more useful to us. And I must say, this is a really nice way of representing complex objects. So I've worked with many different data types over the years, and uh, the JavaScript object notation is the one that has really stuck um, to the point where whatever language I'm working in, uh, if I'm starting uh, to learn a new language, one of the first things I'll do is uh, try to figure out how do I create a, a JavaScript object notation uh, or JSON object. And uh, for example, in Python, uh, dictionaries, I think are the closest thing you can get to uh, uh, JSON objects. Um, so uh, it's, it's quite useful. Uh, number one, when you create your JSON object, for instance, like this, it's quite readable you can uh, easily figure out uh, what the attributes are. You can simply read this and get a, a good idea about what this object is. And uh, the nice thing about having keys is that you don't then have to try and guess what these values are. So it is possible to create an object to say, uh, for example, if you create a class and you say new person and you, <clears throat> you just specify, a list of things like this <clears throat> and um, and then just looking at this list without keys is not very expressive it, it takes a couple of seconds to figure out what this means whereas in javascript object notation it's quite expressive 
So when we look at uh, in the editor, the code on the side, it's simply a, a, a JSON object and um, we, can, uh, we can kind of pick our way through it. One of the main things to look out for is the, the plons. So when you see that, it typically means that it's a list of other publons. So you can have publons inside of publons, right? And uh, your plons can be a list of things or they can be um, an object. And that's one of the confusing things. Um, it's not a strict uh, object typing, at least uh, the way the publons are defined. Um, it tries to give the user maximum flexibility, uh, which is a questionable design choice, but that's what it is. Um, so you can have simply a list of publons. So here you can see uh, it's square brackets. That means it's a list of things. And in this list, we have an object here and another object there and so on. So a list doesn't have to be a list of strings like we saw for the names of fingers. A list doesn't have to be only a list of numbers. You can have lists or arrays of any type of object. So in this case, we have complex publons and, and you can have different types of objects in this list as well. So uh, JavaScript object notation, it's as loose and as open as that. It allows us to create some very sophisticated objects uh, as we'll see. All right, so that's just uh, the purpose of this video was just to introduce us to the idea of, uh, of JavaScript object notation.